In this Flash CS3 and ActionScript 3 lesson, we'll be demonstrating how you can create your own cool custom uh, digital clock for Flash. And uh, let me publish it out so you can get a look at it first. And that's it working as an SWF. And it looks pretty good to me. So um, we'll shut that and take a look at the FLA now. Now on the uh, on stage you can see we have a layer here that's clock background and that's a little uh, movie clip that's just cosmetics and I set it to have a drop shadow just to make it look like it's sticking out a little bit and our text fields are right above it in a layer sitting on stage there and uh, this one renders AM PM this one renders seconds this one renders minutes and this one renders the hours it's that simple and I made two frames uh, because we wanted to loop uh, we're set to 12 frames per second so every uh, second we're gonna this thing is running 12 frames every second so that's more than enough you can have this set to 8 you can have this set to 32 and it would still do the same exact thing and uh, and that's the reason why I have two frames there so the file loops on itself and ideally you would want to have this thing maybe in its own movie clip inside of your application uh, that way, you're not you're not interfering with any other timelines, and uh, you can copy and paste it into your applications more easily from one to another, and things like that. So I recommend you put this into its own movie clip, uh, even though you see mine is on the main timeline here. That would be bad juju, I think. Uh, so just have yours. Make sure it's it's in its own movie clip, and you're setting up the timeline in its own movie clip that's separated from the rest of your file okay let's take a look at the code now the first line packs the date object into a variable named now these three lines take the now variable and it gets the hours gets the minutes and it gets the seconds and we pack them into their own variable names here that we can use more easily down in our conditionals now this first conditional it uh, sets the AM or PM dynamic text field to render correctly according to military time so I'm saying if the hours are less than or greater than or equal to 12 then it, we know it's PM else we know it's AM uh, so that's what we render and you can see right here AM PM text it throws it right into the dynamic text field on stage according to which conditional is correct um, now this next conditional is uh, converting the military time the hours of the uh, the hour segment of the time display uh, it's all in military time if you don't convert it so we convert it here saying if the hours are greater than 12 then hours equals uh, say it's 13 or 14 here minus 12 so that'll make it say 1 or 2 if that makes any sense to you you're saying uh, so let's say the hour happens to be 14 military time so we're saying hours equals 14 minus 12 essentially giving us 2 and that's what we want and this next one just make sure that if time happens to be 0 0 that it says 12 because we know that 0 0 means 12 okay the next conditional is the one that adds the 0 to the front of any hour less than 12 so if your hour this uh, variable happens to equal 8 it'll uh, this conditional will pack a 0 in front of the 8 making it uh, the correct display for like a digital clock like you'd buy at Walmart uh, we don't want it just to say 8 we want it to say 0 8 if it's 10 it doesn't do anything at all it just uh, renders out the 10 and it won't add a 0 in front of the 10 making it 0 1 0 because that would be retarded okay in this next conditional um, if the minutes it's the same thing as the hours if the minutes are uh, uh, less than 10 then we pack a zero in front of it with the same kind of logic and uh, this next one does the seconds and you can see in each one of the conditionals is where the text is actually rendered it's uh, in the text field on stage here that's when it's actually put in that text field is in the conditionals themselves so that's pretty much how it works it's pretty simple straightforward um, 
maybe it might take you listening to me ramble on about what the code does just a couple of times to really grasp it but I think the first time you go through it without me even explaining it you can just go and download the FLA open it up and look at it and say oh okay I see exactly what he did and then you'll be good to go and knowing how this thing works and you can build uh, a whole lot of cool things another thing to note is that if you're slick you can take all of these variables hours minutes and seconds and just pack them into one text field they don't have to be one two three four different dynamic text fields it can all be a nice variable string uh, a text string that that would be rendered out nice and evenly but it, sometimes you know it's it's nicer to keep them separated so you can get the AM and PM to be a little smaller or you can spread them out any way you want put them anywhere you want make it look like whatever you want so that's the reason why I opt to do it that way but like I said it's almost easier to uh, have it in one text field just render straight out through there as long as you know how to pack all these variables together in a string and if you actually if you want help doing that just come into the forum at develop PHP ask and I'll I'll pack it all into a string for you and uh, you can then use that code to render out and then maybe uh, you would really have to rework all these conditionals to actually make that happen so that's why I didn't put it in here but if you know what you're doing you could pack it all into one string so that's how you make a digital clock in flash CS3 all customized nice for your applications okay we'll see you guys next lesson